When I tell you that this is the third time I've tried to record this video today because the other two takes, like one of them my audio messed up and one of them my camera died and now I'm filming this on my phone. Ugh. Hi there, it's Jin Zhang and obviously I'm a bit of a mess, but you know I had to hop on here and talk about an even bigger mess going down in the world of K-pop, as I do. So for those of you not in the know, 5050, who are the singers of everyone's favorite TikTok sound, I give a are currently in the midst of a legal battle with their music label. So everything happened quite fast, basically within the span of a week. People were going back and forth, putting out different press releases. And as a result, I think there's been a lot of misunderstanding and especially a lot of negative feedback. So today, I will give my own take on the situation, but before that, I wanted to just present a timeline of the facts of the situation as best as I can through my research so that we can all be on the same page about what happened. So I might be looking down at my laptop a bit. I do have a script, uh, but it's because I want to be accurate with the details. And also just a quick disclaimer that everything I know about 5050's pre-debut timeline is mostly from this one dispatch article that is written mostly from the perspective of 5050's company CEO, which, you know, he's one guy and there are many, many players involved in this game. However, I did try to pull out only what seemed like objective facts from that article. And then the rest of the timeline is sourced from objective or hopefully objective news sources so everything should be accurate if you spot any inaccuracies just drop it in the comments but without further ado let's get into it 5050 started as a girl group project idea by Chon Hong Jun on Song Il, also known as Xi'an and someone known as K who is the CEO of Camp Camp is a concert management company based in the US so the trio met in late 2019 and decided that they were going to create a global K-pop group. Since the group was Chun's idea, it fell to him to make the company and recruit trainees for what became known as the 50 Project. An was a camp employee at the time, and he had producing experience, so he and two other camp employees were sent to help produce the group. And in general, camp was supposed to help with the overseas promotion aspect that a global K-pop group needs. However, in January 2021, after some apparent disagreements with Chun, Camp stepped down from the 50 project. In May of that same year, An and the two other Camp employees who were involved in the 50 project resigned from Camp and founded their own company, The Givers. Now, since Camp had left the 50 project, Chun was obviously looking for someone to fulfill that global promotion role that Camp had left behind. And since he was already working with the founders of The Givers, it was a pretty easy transition. So in June 2021, The Givers formally began working with Chun on The 50 Project. Finally, in November 2022, 5050 debuted as a four-member girl group with their mini-album, The 50. The members of the group consisted of Kina, Shena, Shio, and Aran, and all were 18 at the time of debut. The 50 received positive reception, but it wasn't until their second mini-album, The Beginning Cupid, that the group really took off. Released in February 2023, the title track of this album, Cupid, quickly became an internet sensation. A whole slew of successes followed, including streaming records, magazine features, and millions of album sales, culminating with the group getting signed to Warner Records in late April. And in late May, it was announced that 5050 would be featured on the soundtrack for the Barbie movie. 5050 was quickly becoming the juggernaut of 2023 pop culture, and it seemed like nothing could stand in their way. Until it all came crashing down. On June 23rd, 2023, a track 5050's management company released a statement saying that outside forces were trying to persuade the girls to end their contracts with Attract and sign with another agency. Attract said that they were willing to take legal action against these outside forces because trying to get the girls to violate their contracts with Attract was illegal. In the next few days, the CEO of Attract, Chon Hong Jun, who was one of the originators of the 50 Project, continued to put out statements saying that the outside forces would soon be revealed, and even at one point said that Warner Music Korea had been contacted by the outside forces and were trying to get them to sell 5050 off. Amidst the media confusion, it was perceived that John had been accusing Warner Music 
of conspiring with outside forces to try to steal 50-50 from him. So Warner Music responded and basically said, hey, we haven't been doing anything untoward in terms of our artist management. And also you said that you were going to send us proof of these conversations, which you didn't. So basically stop making up rumors about us. And this all happened between June 24th and 26th. Now on June 27th, a tract claimed that someone tried to shut down the 5050 Fan Cafe, which is basically a forum website where K-pop artists and fans can share posts to each other, and blamed this attempted shutdown on, you guessed it, the outside forces once again. And then later that day, a tract launched a lawsuit against Xi'an and three other employees of the Givers, stating that they had breached their contract by obstructing work, which included delaying project handovers and deleting important digital files. The statement or the press release stated that Xi'an had also secretly purchased the copyright for Cupid from an overseas songwriter, which if true, apparently would imply that the givers were receiving royalties for Cupid rather than a tract, okay? The very next day, June 28th, the news broke that 5050 themselves were suing Attract. The injunction had been filed on June 19th, and the members claimed that Attract had not fulfilled their contractual obligations, including financial transparency and rightly managing the members' health. Through the injunction, the members were trying to have their contracts with Attract temporarily suspended, and notably, the press release said that this decision had been made by the members and their families independently without the influence of the mysterious and villainous outside forces. On June 29th, the Givers announced a countersuit against Attract for spreading false rumors about them, which is a defamation suit. In the statement, they said that per Attract's request, they had stopped working as consultants for 5050 for Attract at the end of May, and so they were only working with Warner Music at this point for global promotion. However, the statements made by John had seemed to suggest that the Givers were the outside forces trying to steal 5050 away from Attract, so the Givers said that this was untrue, as also was John's statement that they had secretly purchased the copyright to Cupid. So you'd think at this point, these grown men essentially having a feud in front of everyone would have left everything to be settled in court, since all the lawsuits had been launched. But no, on July 3rd, Chun showed a news outlet a recording of a phone call that was allegedly between him and Warner Music Executive Director, or Warner Music Korea, sorry, Executive Director, Hyun Mo. In the phone call, Yoon tells Chun that he needs to check on An. Um, and also says that Warner Music previously offered on 20 billion won, which is 15 million USD, to buy 50-50 from them. This phone call essentially seems to corroborate Chun's claim that Warner Music Korea and An and the Givers were conspiring to steal 50-50 from him. And that same day, the Givers responded by releasing a statement, a full statement, on their lawsuit against Attract. In the statement, they say that Warner Music had originally approached them to propose a label deal, which they then discussed with Chun. So according to them, a label deal involves a larger global distribution company, such as Warner Music, investing in a smaller company, such as Attract, to provide them with the funds and infrastructure they need while not affecting the way the smaller company already runs. In return, the musical artists from that smaller company would appear under the larger company's label. The givers state that they saw this deal as being beneficial for both Attract and 5050 in the long run. However, Chun wasn't pleased. He wanted to list Attract on the stock market, and so he told Warner Music that he was more interested in an advance. Apparently, Warner Music was okay with this, so the deal was struck. There's a lot of information they said in this statement, but I guess the TLDR of it is we didn't make any backdoor deals with Warner Music. Okay, Chun was aware of all our interactions with them. Chun keeps saying that we did all these backdoor interactions when we didn't, and we didn't want to speak too much about the situation because we thought that all this press would reflect negatively on 50-50, but given that Chun keeps running his mouth, we kind of feel forced to. Now I'm writing the script on July 5th, so I will cap off this timeline with what we know as of this date. Um, if more important stuff happens between when I write the script and when I release this video, because I'm a slow editor, I will put it in the comments or add it in edits or something. You'll know. As of today, July 5th, 
5050 had their preliminary hearing for their case against the tract. During the hearing, 5050's lawyer pointed out some financial inconsistencies in the settlement documents that a tract sent to them before and after the injunction was filed, and basically states that because they want more financial transparency, they are filing a criminal complaint in addition to the existing injunction. So I don't know the entire details, uh, probably because I'm not that financially literate, but anyway, that's sort of the gist of it. They want more financial transparency, and they also emphasize that they're not looking for a monetary payout, like they're not just trying to get more money out of the company, but they are just looking for more financial transparency. So, to sum things up, 5050 hit it big this year with Cupid and filed for an injunction stating that their company was not fulfilling its contractual obligations. The company claims that outside forces are leading the group astray and blame their former collaborators launching a lawsuit against them. The former collaborators hit back with a countersuit saying that all the claims are false and now all these legal processes are underway. So given this convoluted mess, People are taking sides, as people always do when faced with a controversy of this magnitude, because we always like to think that we're on the moral right side of the situation. Is Chan right, and is this all an elaborate scheme orchestrated by the givers in order to steal 50-50 from him now that they're successful? Or are the givers right, and is Chan just making up false rumors in an attempt to desperately hold on to his claim to fame. Are 50-50 in the right for seeking damages for the mistreatment at the hands of their label? Or are they just getting greedy because they suddenly got a viral hit? Now personally, I don't really like to take sides when there are literal legal cases involved because I know that as outside spectators, we don't have access to all the evidence that would be shown in a court of law. And so we don't really know the full picture of everything that happened, like what the truth of the situation is. However, as a musician myself, and as a K-pop connoisseur, if you will, I do have a leaning, um, and it is towards 50-50 side. I personally believe in treating artists with care and respect, and I know that this industry, this K-pop industry, all too often doesn't. I think one thing that's particularly egregious about this case is the claims or the complaints about how the company treated the artist's health. In early May, it was announced that Aran had been injured and was getting surgery, and so she would be taking a break from activities, which is a pretty normal standard announcement as far as K-pop companies' announcements about artist's health go. But according to the lawsuit, this statement was made without ever consulting Aran and her family about how much they wanted to share about uh, the medical procedures. And so I think that's, you know, an overstep of patient privacy, someone's right to the privacy about their, their health situation. So, you know, there's that. And I know that initially when Chan first started coming out with his statements, people were really sympathetic towards him. Um, here was this guy, you know, who by his own account sold his car in order to make enough money for the members to debut. And now all of a sudden, since they were successful, people were trying to steal the artist from him, like even the own artist had turned against him. Um, and it, it is pretty sad if you look at it that way. But I think one thing that is suspicious here is the timing of things, okay? 5050 filed their injunction on June 19th. Pretty quietly. I mean, these things usually don't make it into the news right away. It's a legal procedure, you know. And so no one was reporting about 5050 having sued their company at the time. And then four days later, on June 23rd, sort of out of the blue, a tract releases this bizarre statement about how, oh, outside forces are leading the, the members astray and influencing them to break their contract and things like that. It, to me, just doesn't make sense unless you look at it from the perspective of attract maybe having received the injunction documents at that point and suddenly realizing oh my gosh like we have to paint ourselves as the victims here before anyone can say anything to the contrary and although i'm not a lawyer you know i do think it's been pretty smart of 50 50 and the givers to only release statements to their legal teams pretty much whereas john seems to be dropping media bombs like left and right you know there are instances i will admit where someone who is innocent has the table stacked against them and so the only option they have is to go to the news outlets and hope that someone has a sympathetic ear there but i don't think that's the case here i mean surely john has a legal team like he's suing people he must have a lawyer so why would you not let your lawyers do the talking for you in my opinion people who are calm and know they're in the right 
will just let their lawyers write all the statements for them because they don't want to misspeak and misrepresent their case, right? And people who are panicking or think that they know better than the lawyers would try to speak over their lawyers, right? Um, so I'm not saying that I know exactly that that's what John is doing, but that's what seems a little suspect to me. But truthfully, whether you believe, attract, or the givers, I think 50-50 has the most to lose here. Like, Chan, Sian, all the other company executives or whoever is involved in these lawsuits, they're all fully grown adults. If they lose these lawsuits, it's because they made their own business decisions and legal decisions. Meanwhile, 50-50 are a bunch of 19-year-olds, and their parents are helping them sue, right? And if they lose their lawsuit, their reputation is on the line, which is really important if you're a celebrity. So I personally don't think they would have made this lawsuit just on a whim, like they would have really thought about it. Because if they lose this lawsuit, everyone's going to shun them. They're going to be looked at as greedy teenagers who got a taste of fame and then decided that they were worth more than they really were. They will be called immature, untrustworthy, selfish, prideful. I mean, people are already calling them these things online. If they lose this lawsuit, they might never get to be professional singers again. And even now 50-50 is losing opportunities left and right. Their Barbie Dreams music video shoot was cancelled. Brand deals were pulled. And I know that to some extent this has to do with the legal ramifications of the situation, right? Attract is a management company who's probably been coordinating a lot of these opportunities for them. But now that 50-50 is suing Attract, like there's probably some weird mix-ups there that are too complicated for us normal people to understand. But I think it's still sad, nonetheless, that once you decide to sue your company, you're out of a job for even while the legal process is going on. And I have to emphasize, Cupid's success was nothing like we've ever seen before in K-pop. With this one song from a barely known group from a newborn company, they were on the Billboard charts. They were on the Spotify charts. They got nominated for Grammys, okay? And then everything, everything was ripped away from them in the course of, like, a week. I, I just, in a way, I think they've opened a tragic window into the deep abyss of the K-pop industry. If you're a K-pop artist, to your company, you are just a commodity. You are only worth as much money as you can make the company. I mean, just look at how both Attract and The Givers are talking about 50-50, right? Like, John has this whole sob story about how... He wanted to treat the members well, and so he sold his cars to make money for them to debut, and he, he got them a dorm in Gangnam because he wanted them to live comfortably, like, all this stuff. And on the other hand, you have the givers saying things like, oh, well, you know, we were being really careful about the situation because we didn't want the things we say to reflect negatively on the girls, and etc. And, like, I'm not saying that these things aren't true. I'm not saying they've never cared about 50-50. I think actually both parties truly think that they care about 50 50 um, and want what's best for the girls but i think that when you start telling these statements about how well i care about 50 50 more or like oh no i care about 50 50 more then 50 50 turns to not the musical artists not the humans that they are but just a pawn a prop for you to use in your media play does that make sense? Am I making sense here? I think maybe if you're kind of new to K-pop and 50-50 is the first situation like this that you're seeing, then this can all sound a little surprising, a little shocking. But for those of us who have been in it for a long time, uh, this is another repetition of the same pattern. Young K-pop artists sign these contracts with companies, probably not knowing all the details of what the contracts mean. And then at some point, when they get successful, they start to ask questions like, aren't we doing really well? And so aren't we therefore generating a lot of money? And so therefore, where is all the money going? And I can't comment on where the money has actually gone in 50-50's case. Like, I think that'll have to be revealed in court. But it's clearly not been done in such a way that the, the members actually know where it is, which is a huge problem. And I think that as long as entertainment companies both in Korea and across the world, are primarily motivated just by the desire to earn rather than the actual well-being of their artists, then artists will continue to suffer in the dark wondering about, you know, where all the resources and money are going. They will continue to not be treated well by their companies. So that's all I had to say for today. That's the video. 
and I know it's a little depressing, so sorry about that. I also know it might sound a little hypocritical for me to make these large sweeping criticisms of the K-pop industry when I am literally someone who is a K-pop fan, listens to music, owns merch, has gone to concerts, all that thing, but I, I do think that as someone who knows the K-pop industry pretty well, that actually puts me in a better position to criticize it than someone who is on the outside and knows very little about the industry. And I'm not saying that everything I've said is right. Like, I could be misinformed or I could be making a malformed opinion. That's just based on my observations of the industry after having been involved in fandom for six years, seven years? Wow, time flies. I want to give a very special shout out to the 5050 archive on Twitter at 5050log for translating a lot of the articles about 5050's ongoing situation from Korean into English. It really helped a lot with my research as I don't speak Korean very well, um, so thanks so much for that. And if you are interested in knowing all the latest updates about the legal battle, the legal situation surrounding 5050, or just in general, you know, following up with 5050's activities, continuing to support the music that they produce, and helping them in whatever way you can as they go through these legal proceedings, then please do follow 5050 Archive on Twitter. I will link them in the description. And as for me, you know, feel free to let me know how you feel about this video. You can like or dislike. I won't complain. If you do want to hear more from me, you can subscribe. I have a full-time job now, which keeps me very busy from September to June, but in the summer I have some free time, so maybe I'll drop another video this summer if I get inspired to. Who knows? If you want to be there, you'll have to subscribe. In the meantime, until then, wherever you are, whenever you are, I hope you're having a good one. Bye.